Today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, my disability. Uh, I've been pretty open with the fact that I identify as a disabled person, but figured a handy little short video just as an overview of my diagnoses and sort of some basic stuff would be really helpful. So to start with, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a genetic disorder. It affects how I produce collagen, which is an important protein. It's in every tissue in your body. So all of the connective tissue everywhere in my body is not really made properly. And this can affect you in wild, wildly divergent ways. I have what's called type 3 of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is hypermobility type. So it makes me really, really bendy. Um, so when I stick up my thumb, it kind of bends backwards and like, I'm not going to demonstrate this because it tends to gross people out and I'm not really supposed to, but like my thumb, I can put it flat to my wrist that way and down that way. Like that's just, that like I'm not pushing it. It just does that. Like my elbows bend backwards. So like if I lean in video, sometimes you'll see my like elbow bends the wrong way. My knees, my ankles, um, I've dislocated every joint in my body. Every joint in my body is messed up, uh, mainly because my tendons aren't really strong enough to hold everything in place for me. So my muscles have to compensate and when they get tired they just drop it and there's nothing holding them together so everything just dislocates. I'm about as extreme as you can get with the hypermobility thing um, and still be able to walk. Other complications that come from Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome include gastroparesis, which is a paralyzed or partially paralyzed digestive system, which means that my everything from my esophagus, stomach, all the way down my colon doesn't move properly. I've basically cut out anything that's high in fiber from my diet completely. I don't really eat vegetables unless they're like pureed. I don't really eat a lot of fruits. Like I can't have anything with seeds in it. I can't have like fruits with peels, which makes me really sad because apples are like my favorite, but I eat a lot of applesauce to make up for it. So I have to eat a lot of soft, mushy foods. I can't have anything high in fat either because fat slows down your digestion. So I have to be really careful with that as well. What I can do is if I need to increase calories is have higher fat liquids so that it goes through my system a bit easier. I'm not really supposed to drink a lot of alcohol. That also it metabolizes in your stomach so that slows your digestion as well so I'm not supposed to have that plus it interacts with a lot of my medications so I can have a little bit of alcohol but not very much like a lot of things I can't eat this does mean that like I will not deal with anyone telling me I should go vegan I just I can't most of my diet is dairy it's the only way I can get any calories in some days other days I'm a bit better but I've been told by my dietitian that I have low iron and should be eating as much meat as possible because I don't absorb nutrients very well either so the only efficient way for me to get iron in my system is through meat um, mostly lean ground meat I have to take medication to even eat that the amount I'd have to eat to get uh, an appropriate amount of iron from vegetables would just involve me eating nothing but broccoli all day and then I wouldn't hit my calories and I'd start to starve to death so no telling me to go vegan I'm totally cool with anyone who wants to have whatever diet they want some people with gastroparesis can go vegan I personally am severe enough that I can't I do not like people telling other people what diet they should have like don't tell vegans they should eat meat because that's just as bad as them telling me I shouldn't when I have to so no telling people what diets they should have but I don't like people telling me what to eat um, my stomach does that enough as it is. I don't need it from other people. Another thing that comes with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is uh, dysautonomia, which means my autonomic nervous system, which is the part of your nervous system responsible for automatic things that your body does to sort of keep you balanced, uh, doesn't work properly for me. I have what's called Raynaud's phenomenon, but basically just means that my blood pressure in my extremities is really bad. So my hands and feet get really cold all the time. Like even in the summer, my feet can be little ice cubes. But I get cold really easily. My resting heart rate when I'm sitting down is about 57 beats per minute, which is really good. It's slightly lower than is expected, but that's okay. The dysautonomia means when I stand up, I get tachycardia. So it's called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. When I stand up, I get tachycardia my heart can go anywhere from 85 to 120 normally I have had times where um, just walking down the street 
um, has made my heart go to 180, which literally feels like a heart attack. Like it does not feel good. According to doctors, it's considered as dis for a lot of people who have it as disabling as anyone who's has congenitive heart failure or is going through dialysis for kidney failure. It is really, really difficult for me to do things standing up, especially if I have to like put my hands above my head, like holding onto like the bar on the subway. Um, my hands go numb within seconds. They start burning and really, really hurting within about 30 seconds. Like it's, I can't, and then I get really, really dizzy. So I can't be standing up on the subway. From that alone, let alone the joint problems, people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome are very likely to have autism spectrum disorder. I have autism. I can talk. I'm okay. I'm pretty decent at socializing one-on-one. -on -one. I'm okay in groups, though the more overstimulated I get, the harder it is. Autism tends to show up differently for people who are raised female at birth than people who are raised male at birth. I do know a few trans people who are autistic and it's definitely a socialization thing that has to do with how it ends up presenting, not so much what your actual gender identity is. And oddly enough, people with uh, autism tend to be more likely to um, identify as trans or non-binary. I myself am, I don't know, I don't know if it's acceptable for me to identify as non-binary because I'm I'm okay with female pronouns, um, I dress femme, I identify as a hard femme, um, I don't really have any issue with what people assume my gender is. I just don't understand what gender is as a concept, so I don't know. Most autistic people I know are at least confused about what gender means. Um, whether that results in them having a non-binary gender or being transgender or just being attracted to lots of genders because we don't really have solid boundaries about that. I have PTSD from childhood nonsense. Um, I don't really want to get into it, but suffice to say my childhood was pretty shit and being disabled and not knowing it made it a whole lot worse. Especially autism, just people pick on you for being weird and it's just because your brain's different and there's not much you can do about it especially girls or people who are raised female who have autism, we tend to be people pleasers. So it's really difficult for us to get out of really bad situations once, they, once we find ourselves in them. I have that. Uh, I have major depression. I consider myself a recovering addict of self-harm. I relapse generally about once a year. I'm really proud of myself for getting down to that. It used to be much more frequent. Yeah, so... Being disabled, I, I walk with a cane every day, I have braces to help me at work, I have a chair to sit down when I'm at work, at least my vanilla job. I work like a cash register so I can sit down and stay sitting down the whole time. My work's been really, really good about that. Also, because the only real job I can do is that, which is minimum wage part-time, um, and my cost of living is really high being disabled, I'm really limited about the housing situation because accessible housing, especially here in Toronto, is absolutely atrociously difficult to find. Like if you're not under 65 and you don't have a like infinite amount of money, accessible housing is almost impossible. And then I also have medication and then having like meal replacement shakes are really expensive and I need those to make up for some of the nutrients I have difficulties getting. Just my cost of living is really high so I also do sex work and modeling to sort of make the extra money so that I can afford living. There's lots of disabled people who do sex work I enjoy what I do, but even if I didn't, um, it's sort of the only real option I have. Um, so I, I'm really active in the sex workers' rights sort of community. I am totally against the Swedish model. Um, I don't think my clients helping me pay for my medication is a moral problem that needs to be solved by the police. As a disabled person, I'm at increased risk of police violence, especially due to autism and my mental problems. I'm luckily white, which kind of counteracts some of that. People who have disabilities and are also people of color, or people of color who are sex workers, people of color who are trans, face, and like the intersections are endless, face way more police violence. And the last thing we need as marginalized people is more police in our lives. In fact, most of the crappy things we deal with are from police, not clients. I 
really like doing it. I like modeling. It's a great way to um, make art in a way that's kind of accessible for me. I, I've been really enjoying using my flexibility to my advantage and using my creativity for like sort of physical expression sort of art, um, performance art, um, rope bondage art. It's also a way to fight back against this idea that disabled people aren't beautiful or aren't sexy or um, sort of increased representation of us in the media. I used to play instruments, but a lot of those are really difficult for me because again, my hands don't work. And like, I played French horn, which luckily for the F horn, you only really need two fingers because the third one is only for really low or really high notes or A flat, which you never use. Um, but I haven't been able to play in a long time because I can't afford to buy my own horn. I only had one through school. And that was a long time ago. I'm 25. I haven't been in high school in ages. And I dropped out of university pretty, I think, third year was my last year. Um, I got kicked out because I'm disabled. Yay! Because apparently... Um, being so depressed and triggered from PTSD that you don't know what day it is doesn't really count as having failed marks removed um, because I should have known to drop out because that's how that works and then the next year I was bedridden from my stupid leg so it was apparently I had no choice but to have six hours of lectures back and back to back and I was undiagnosed at the time because of a shitty doctor which I have since rectified with a much better family doctor here in Toronto but yeah so that's kind of rambly introduction to like my disabilities and sort of the issues that affect me. If you want me to talk about anything just leave a comment. I'd be totally happy to talk about more about disability. I kind of it's my everyday life so yeah leave a leave a comment, like, um, subscribe I guess if you want to see more of me talking about random stuff. I'm gonna try and do videos more frequently because I've got more time off right now. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye!